data. And I'll get to this table in a second. Uh, the table is on a page further down. You'll just have to trust me that they're less than 2 and 9, respectively, the skewness and kurtosis. So homogeneity of variance. Additionally, the assumption of homogeneity of variance was tested and satisfied via Levine's F-test. And then I report the F-test here after placing a comma after the word F-test. Now, F equals 34, uh, F with 34 degrees of freedom, and the F value is 0.17, and the P value is 0.679. Now, in SPSS, this output for the Levine's test is reported with the t-test itself. So in this section here, at the start, you can see that there's an f value and a significance value associated with Le Levine's test of equality of variances. And the descriptive statistics are in the first table. So now I've satisfied the assumption of homogeneity variance because p is greater than 0 0.05. Next, the independent sample t-test was associated with a statistically significant effect. So now I've actually conducted the analysis because the assumptions have been satisfied. And there's a t value here and 34 degrees of freedom again with a 3.09 value for the t and p less than 0 0.05. It's actually equal to 0 0.004. Now again, in the SPSS output, that's found in the second table and you can see t and degrees of freedom here. So equal variance is assumed is the column is the row I'm using because that that has been satisfied in this case. So 3.092 and degrees of freedom of 34. You only report a t value to two decimal places. And so I've reported here 3.09. And you only report f values to two decimal places. But you report t p values to 3. That's just how people do it typically. So now that I've conducted the analysis and I've rejected the null hypothesis, the effect is statistically significant, I actually add another statement to actually interpret what has happened here. So I write, thus, the non-smokers were associated with a statistically significantly larger mean brain volume than smokers. I appreciate a statement like that. It re comes back to the hypothesis. Why did you do this analysis? And what's the significance of this result? This is almost getting into discussion, but not really. It's still a statement related to the results. And then I've got a statement to the effect about effect size. You should always supplement a statistical analysis with a p-value uh, that has a p-value with an effect size estimate. And for comparing two means, a conventional uh, way that the stat that the effect size is reported is with Cohen's D and you should check out a video on how to stats if you don't understand what Cohen's D is it's very useful very popular it was estimated at 1.03 so there's about a one standard deviation difference between the two groups and based on Cohen's guidelines that's large again check out the how to stats video on Cohen's D and if you want a, an understanding of Cohen's D and the guidelines. So now that I've reported the effect size and interpreted it in terms of whether it's big or not, I've also got a gra graphical representation of the results. Now this is really extra information. Typically I wouldn't report uh, a graphical representation of the difference just between two means. But there are certainly disciplines which would, and I think cognition is one of them. But in other areas they wouldn't. But I've done it to be very thorough. And so the next, that's the end of the narrative portion of an independent samples t-test. So it's, a, it's a about a, f it's a decent sized paragraph. These are all the results associated with an independent samples t-test. The only thing I can think that I would add would be confidence intervals associated with the Cohen's d-value. But you would, SPSS doesn't do that. Uh, you would need specialist software to do it. There's actually some syntax out there, SPSS syntax out there that does it. But that's probably the only thing that I would add to make it you know, something just that much even better of a results section. So next, on the next page, I've got my references. And here's that Cohen's uh, paper where he reports what a small, medium, and large effect size uh, are, what they are. And here's that Schmieder paper where they examine the robustness of actually ANOVA 
But because the independent sample t-test is a special case of ANOVA, the results that they reported there would apply to ANOVA. I'm going to review this paper and others in another video to help people understand how and how ANOVA and t-test are robust to, viol to violations of the assumption of, of uh, both normality